Hi, I'm Dr. Deepak. Let's talk masks. Uh, let us understand masks with this one single slide. As we progress with this presentation, we are going to fill each one of these empty circles with masks in the increasing order of how good they are. The first category are ill-fitted masks. These are some examples of ill-fitting masks. Not covering the nose and mouth, loosely fitting the face, not covering the chin, not covering the nose or not covering the nose adequately. These belong to the first category even before the circle that should have no mask at all because an ill-fitted mask gives a false sense of security. Three of masks are cloth masks, two-ply masks or three-ply masks, also called the surgical masks. The surgical masks are generally better than the rest because they have multiple layers with specific functions for each of the layers. Like for example, the outermost layer is a hydrophobic layer which is repels out body fluids and large respiratory droplets. But although that uh, surgical mask is better, it is still placed in this category for one specific reason, which we will come to later. But none of these masks serve any purpose without them fitting you properly. This is an example of a well-fitted mask, a mask that reaches the bridge of the nose, covers below the chin, fits your nose and mouth tightly, and there is very minimal gap between your chin and the mask on the sides. These belong to the second category of masks. Since ill-fitted masks and not wearing a mask at all do not offer any protection whatsoever, we will remove them from this spectrum. We will now look at what comes next. Henceforth, the masks that are going to be discussed are the only masks that protect the wearer. So this would mean that what we discussed prior to this are masks that do not adequately protect the wearer. That is because these masks are designed to prevent infection from leaving out of the nose and the mouth. Then why are these masks advocated by the government? That is because they are easily available. Some of them can be even made at home. And, and if everybody wears this mask in public, the chances of virus spreading from one person to the other dramatically reduces. Now, when we get into the next category of masks, you must remember that the same rules of the mask being well fitted to be effective applies to all these as well. The next category of mask is the respirators, also called FF FFRs. These are filtering face respirators. You might have heard of multiple terms being used. In India, what is available are the N95s, N99s, P100s, FFP2s, FFP3s. All these are different categories of masks which are used in different countries. So N95s are equivalent to FFP2s and uh, P2s and N99s and uh, are equivalent to FFP3s. So what does N and P stand for? They are industry standards which denote whether the mask is resistant to oil or not. There is another category called R which, is, uh, which indicates that the mask is resistant to oil for a specific period of time, usually about eight hours. What does 95 in an N95 mask mean? So 95 is actually the percentage of 0.3 micrometer particles that a mask can filter. Also interesting is the fact that an oxygen molecule is over 1000 times smaller than the viral particle. Therefore, they do not get filtered. To understand this better, you have to understand the functioning of an N95 mask. It cannot be equated to a strainer because an N95 mask is more akin to a intricately laid web. In fact, intricately laid sticky multi-layered web is what an N95 mask is. 
This is an actual image of the fibers within the N95 mask. So how does the mask filter? So the image on your right, the red dots are assuming that those are the fibers within the N95 mask and the blue lines are the direction in which the air flows. On your left are particles of different sizes. The uppermost one is particles over 0.3 micrometers. The middle is 0.3 micrometers and the lower one is the virus. Let us look at how the large particles get filtered. As they flow along with the air, air, can, air molecules can bend and go beyond the filter, whereas these particles via inertia cannot move as freely as air and therefore get blocked by the filters. A 0.3 micrometer particle is a bit tricky because it flows along with the wind and can along with the air and can divert and go between the gaps of the fibers. To stop this from happening, N95 has a trick up its sleeve. These fibers are electrically charged. They have a permanent static when they are manufactured and this static attracts these particles to absorb them onto their surface. That is how they prevent these particles from getting through. A viral particle on the other hand being very small, two reasons why it can easily be filtered. Number one being that these particles do not float around as a single viral particle. Even if they do, the viral load that you may be inhaling is very low if they come in singles. They often, they are often, tra they often travel in, in aerosols in large water droplets with as multiple viruses which would behave as large particles and get blocked by inertial properties. Whereas a single viral particle, it is so small that it gets bounced around by other molecules of air around it. Therefore, it travels in a Brownian movement. A Brownian movement is random zigzag movements. So these zigzag movements actually make it more easier for these fibers which are multi-layered to easily trap the virus. This is a chart from CDC showing what kind of facial hair is compatible with a mask. Facial hair plays a very important role in the fit of a mask and an ill-fitting mask like we discussed does not offer any protection. An ideal amount of facial hair is none at all. These are some common questions associated with the use of an N95 mask. To answer the first two questions, we need to first understand the third question properly. So these masks are not designed to be worn forever and they are often disposable types. So any kind of wear and tear will not allow a proper seal of these masks and therefore need to be discarded. If there is any kind of visible soiling of the mask with body fluids, with respiratory droplets, the mask need to be discarded. Or at the end of a duty or at the end of work in a high viral load environment, especially in COVID-19 wards, they need to be also discarded. We can extend the use of these masks by wearing an additional surgical mask over it that would prevent at least water droplets or respiratory droplets from coming on the surface of these masks. How to reuse them? So there are a lot of recommendations by government bodies. So generally what is followed is a one of these methods. Either you have multiple masks, you will use properly labeled well aerated paper bags to keep one mask in each bag and then circulate these bags till they are they come into the category where they need to be discarded. The other way to do it is to sterilize these masks. There are, where there are well studied sterilization methods including dry heat in an electric cooker, UVC filters or hydrogen peroxide uh, vapors. All these three methods have been proven to not affect the filtration capacity or the fit of a mask. So the, all three or, or any one of the three can be used. Now we'll talk about valve masks. A valve mask is an expiratory valve without a filter. 
So therefore, breathing becomes easier there, and it, it is a mask that is generally more comfortable than a valveless mask. Also, it increases the life of a mask because there is no buildup of uh, humidity within the mask. But the problem here is source control. If a person infected continues to wear a mask with a valve, there is no protection to the people around him. This is the reason why these masks are being banned if for public use. Although these masks are still allowed in the healthcare setup, that is because it is generally believed that a healthcare worker will be informed enough to not use them when they are symptomatic and therefore risk spreading the disease to uninfected patients. So that fills up our second circle. What is better than an N95 mask are elastomeric respirators. The biggest benefit they offer is reusability and it is very easy to perform a user seal check. So these masks also have to be fitted with filters which are interchangeable and need to be replaced. This is a half face mask with two types of filters. One is a soft filter and a hard shell filter. Both are rated as P100 and the hard shell filters are recommended for people working in high aerosol environments, especially in surgeries, which because after surgery, these the, the surface of these filters can be easily cleaned. This is a full face respirator. So these have an additional protection for the rest of the face and the eyes. Although I must mention that they the problem with these masks is with people who wear spectacles as that would not provide adequate seal. This is me wearing the glass and I had to improvise a bit with my glasses where I had to re remove the temple of the glass and uh, fix, a, fix a swimming goggles eye strap could, so that it could provide a better fit. Similar questions will apply to elastomeric marks as well. So when do you discard these masks? To answer these questions, let's divide them into mask component and the filter component. The masks are designed to last for a very long time, but they need to be discarded once the elastics become loose or if the silicon that comes in contact with your face has visible cracks or uh, does not fit you properly. And the filters, the soft filters need to be changed every time there is visible soiling and both the kinds of filters need to be changed when they get difficult to breathe in. 3M for example recommends the use of these filters for almost an entire pandemic cycle. There is no real duration to which these can be used but it may be interesting to know that these masks are designed for much higher quantities of particulates like in spray paints and in industries where they work with oils and, um, uh, and in the setting of uh, um, healthcare uh, use, the amount of particles are generally low so they can be used for a very long time. As a general rule, as they start becoming difficult to breathe in, it's better to change these filters. The extended use is generally meant uh, for soft filters as they would act similar to an N95 mask and need to be uh, covered with a surgical mask to prevent any blood splatter or uh, uh, large respiratory droplets from coming over them. Whereas the hard shell filters can be cleaned after use. So how to reuse? All these masks are compatible with sterilization with either hydrogen peroxide vapors or uh, UVC sterilization. What I generally do is I wipe them down with a disinfecting wet wipes. The, the makers will have their own instructions, but most of these masks are not compatible with alcohol based disinfectants because they could rub away the coats from especially the full face masks. So therefore non-alcoholic wet wipes can be used. For example, Savlon, which contains Belzal conium chloride, which is a uh, recommended disinfectant, which can be used to wipe down the filter surfaces and also the entire mask. And then it can be put into, into a UV light to, uh, for better sterilization. So this would almost complete the spectrum. There is one additional category in this spectrum. 
and that is PAPR. A PAPR is a system will with a hood, a tubing, and a, a filter that fits on your waist, which has a HEPA filter layer, which are rated as P100s and N99s, and they are powered by battery and they push in positive pressure air into your hood. So the biggest benefit of these are they are extremely comfortable. They are compatible with minimal amount of facial hair and they come in various types of hoods that also come up to your chest. The drawbacks are that they are very expensive and they are not easily available in our country. The world has almost come to a standstill since the pandemic has begun. Of all the measures that we know that work, a mask is our best bet to get some amount of normalcy back into our lives. Thank you for listening.